Hello, you're watching Results ASEAN with me, Rizal Zokapi. And in this week's episode of Results ASEAN, we'll be looking at the common threads that bind these 10 artworks from Southeast Asia. What are the ties that bind visual arts in Southeast Asia? The clusters of 10 nations that form a ring around some of the most volatile grounds in the world are connected by ancient historical manuscripts and modern visual symbols. Gallery Petronas gathers a selection of 10 contemporary installation artworks to spark discussions about cultural aesthetics, the idea of memories, identities and nationalistic beliefs. The gallery showcases these artworks alongside 20 rare Malay artifacts inspired by the great Malay manuscripts including Sulalatu Salatin and Hikayat Hang Tuah. We sat down with Gallery Petronas Head of Art Management Ratna Siti Akbari to find the connection between modern images in Southeast Asian arts and historical texts. And previously, during the um, era of the Malay manuscripts, mm -hmm. um, we're talking about 400, 500 or 300 yeah, years ago, yes. um, we're looking at written languages. Right. Um, now, um, at Gallery Petronas, it's more visual, it's more tactile, right. and it's more three-dimensional. Right. So a different language is used to, to explain or to describe um, cultural identities and ideas. And what do you make of that? It's very yes. interesting. It touches your heart. When the artworks becomes that emotional connection to your being. The artwork teases you for that exploration. It is again a sense of a visual journey that allows you to read, to read the mind of the artist, to venture into his lenses to see the world. Now, contemporary artworks provides a kind of relational to what you are, to, to what you think, to how you would protect yourself, as I say, can this make relevant now and the next hundred years? But the idea of claiming, right? You mentioned the word claimer, mm. no? the idea of claiming, because of the nationalism that you know gave rise to different nations for the past hundred years, um, it's no longer a, an archipelago treated as a whole region, um, but it's different countries with different modern ideas and modern interpretation of a national identity. Right, so if right. you go to the Philippines, um, some people might, might say that, oh, we're not Malays, we're, the, we're, we're Filipinos. Or if you go to Indonesia, we're not Malays, we're Indonesian. So how do you look at that construct? Right, right. Um, I, I would like to think that uh, this exhibition, as, as I said, examine, explores, yeah. Yeah, a very, very important work to reseek, to deconstruct. The precursor, if I may say, for ASEAN was Mafilindo, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia. The precursor. That means knowing we are actually from the same, from the same traits of people who thinks like, who has got the same culture. We are rice eating, we are sarong people. We are here together because political ideology is what separates us. There is no boundary of cultural geography. Filipino artist Alwin Remilo tries to draw attention to the modern narratives and legends in the history of the Philippines. He juxtaposes figures and symbols of the Philippines' national hero, Jose Rizal, with that of Germany's Adolf Hitler. I was shocked and wasn't sure whether we should or could feature the images but after his explanation, we decided to include it as part of the discussion on the modern Philippines. When I was at art school, um, my lecturer told me that the Philippines was in the convent for about 400, 500 years and yes, then um, yeah. Hollywood came to the Philippines yeah. um, for about 50 years. Um, so. What's the narrative that we're looking at right now for a modern Philippines? And I, I see a lot of images being constructed yeah. and not a single um, definite image that you have um, on your works right now. Maybe you can share with us the I, narrative of modern Philippines. I, well, I look at the culture of the Philippines as kind of, you know, the, the uh, anglicized name is uh, in a plural sense. So the Philippines, which is kind of a, a multiple selves uh, it can also be conjured as a fragmented selves. 
because we've been uh, kind of Hispanized, I mean, and uh, Christianized for a longer time in, in, you know, in our history. Uh, but we have also kind of uh, mimicked also a lot of American culture because we were also after Spanish colonialism under uh, the tutelage, they call the colonial tutelage of, of the Americans. So I look at the culture, uh, these are recent colonial histories, but there's also the older indigenous cultures, animist cultures in the Philippines. But it's kind of all these uh, multiple identities that are all, all constantly in flux. So it's like I would characterize as a kind of a polymorphic uh, 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 character. So it mutates. It's kind of an X, you know, X Men mutating. Mm -hmm. The culture is mutating. So I, I'd like to reflect that in in the work. There are multiple layers, different strands of, uh, you know, fragments of different things. I mean, the the whole work, the portrait, which is part uh, historical portrait, but also a fictional portrait of Rizal, or a corruption of the historical Rizal, but. Uh, layered under a kind of a wing which is shaped like a piano. Mm -hmm. uh, the piano is a kind of a lid of a grand instrument, so it's like carrying the grand narrative of nation. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned earlier that the Philippines always, um, there are always this new, these, these stories, you know, mm -hmm. a, a cross between a fake news and a yes. cross between yes. a modern yes. urban legend yes. um, in the Philippines. Yes. Um, and we're, we're also discussing that in your work. Um, when you look at the portrait of Jose Rizal, yes. um, superimposed with images from the um, World War II, especially in Germany, yes. uh, with relate, uh, with um, related to um, Adolf Hitler, yes. um, it, it's, it's a criticism of how the portrait of Jose Rizal or the image of Jose Rizal has been negatively um, maybe synthesized. I guess the motivation for uh, my interest in using this urban myth because it does for me reflect this uh, kind of re-emergence of our sort of recent history with uh, dictatorship, you know. Uh, we, we are currently becoming like a proto-dictatorship like the Marcos regime. And you know, all these leaders that we had in the Philippines, they all admire like, you know, the authoritarian power of, you know, Duterte, the current mm. president said, you know, if if uh, uh, Hitler killed three or six million Jews, you know, I'm ready to kill you know, three million drug addicts in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So it, it reflects the, what, what's happening in, in real life. And you know, Hitler was also, uh, during the uh, protest years of the Marcos regime, there was a slogan that actually operates and use the, the word Hitler to associate it with the Marcos and US dictatorship during martial law years. So the presence of that uh, icon and mix with another icon of nation, because fascism is, I think, not uh, very distant with extreme nationalism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's it's a corrupted form. Uh, fascism is a corrupted form of nationalism. Nationalism could be a useful tool if we are under uh, the yoke of colonialism. It's a way of liberating ourselves so we can have a better society. But once you reach your political goals, nationalism could be a dangerous thing. Closer to home, Shamsuddin Wahab, a Tigrish figure, spoke candidly about his two odorous figures, Orang Asam and Orang Ikan Kering. These two figures address the memories of Shamsuddin's childhood in Semango Perak, a topic he has been exploring for the past two years. So we're still talking about, uh, or we're still discussing about Semango, uh, following what you did about um, two years ago, um, that discussion on Gunung Semango, the activities of the people, and also that, that narrative that you got um, from looking at uh, Semango um, uh, from a different point of view. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at two different uh, figures here. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can share with us um, why Ikan Masin and why Asam Keping. This is a continuity of my previous work when, when I go back to my hometown. And then um, when I go back to my hometown, uh, when I do this project, um, I'm looking for something that relate with my childhood, everything that relate with my previous situation before I came here in Kuala Lumpur. It's a very different thing. And then this is the, the, 
the period where I, from, from the process I worked in the studio uh, previously, um, uh, the idea is from the, the environment, it's the urban environment. But suddenly when I joined this project, I do some research about my, my hometown, something that relate to me and I think it's more close to me rather than previously my work is very, you know, very political, very provocative. It's from the urban uh, influence. Mm -hmm. But now, that two years ago when I go back to my hometown, I'm looking for my, my I'm searching for my previous memory that I'm, at the same time, I'm an artist, so how can that memory can become my work to share, to share mm -hmm. to the people? So I come up with this idea of, um, the idea is, is, is the idea of how I want to explore another dimension of artwork, you know what I mean? Before, before it, when my understanding of visual art is a, it's a visual, you know what I mean? But now, this time, I'm, I'm looking for the another experience, another dimension of art. When I create this work, the main idea is the the sense, the smell of these two material. You know, and then um, this is uh, some campaign. Uh -huh. um, so it's very native. It's very you, you find this a lot in in It's Smangkong. very native and it's very organic and uh -huh. then. I can find it every day in my my mom kitchen. Uh -huh. Use it every day. Also with the ikan masin, uh -huh. salted fish. And then um, that's the idea. I forgot about the form actually. Uh -huh. I just want to explore the, another dimension. The dimension is maybe for the for the another people. They say, oh, this is not the new dimension, but for my work. Mm -hmm. It's a new dimension. And, and it's always an exploration of yes. what you got from your research um, about uh, a few years ago. Yep. Um, are you still discussing that and discovering new things every time you go back to Smango? Yes. This is, um, this is considered my process where within these two years, I go back to my hometown. I, when I go back to hometown, I said, oh, my scope, my uh, place of working, not in the studio anymore. It, I extend my space of working. It's in both the communities, in both the, my, uh, the, the environment, the, the people, the, the mountain, the trees. And then the process is, is a continuity mm -hmm. from my previous work, from my research mm -hmm. about my hometown. Mm -hmm. And that's all the time we have for this week's episode of Results ASEAN. Tune in to Results ASEAN for more insights into the great minds in Southeast Asia. I'm Rizal Zokapri for Astro Awani.